honor for you to hold the belt. Cause you're a champion, dude. You're a champion. You're a champion. Can I, can I, can I do, can I do yeah, it? Yeah, you can do it like that too, son. You can do whatever you want. You big, they might knock me out. No, I don't want no problems. Yo, yo, what's up? It's the one and only hip hop game of Hot 97. Look, Luke Cage. Look, Netflix. I will slap you if you don't watch this joint. The joint is crazy. Authentic hip hop, good energy, and my man Mike was in Halo 5. And we love Halo, you already know what it is. So look, we about to talk to him now. There's a lot of people here. We gonna have a good time. One love and God bless, let's roll. First, first off, I gotta ask you, man. Can you elaborate on your role, on you know being pops? You know what I'm saying? And Luke Cage, what is that like? And are you a father in real life? And how do you take the real life experience and bring it to the on screen experience? Walk me through that. Well, I am a father in real life. I have three daughters. Um, I also, my father was so important and significant to me in my life. I mean, everything that I do, you know, from for the last 30 or 40 years, I take a part of my father with me in that and so in order to in when so that's why it's very easy for me to step into the role as a mentor in any kind of way because I was mentored in such an amazing way not just by my father but other father figures that I had in my life and I think it's a responsibility that we have because it's the only thing that we can give to the young people coming along we can give them that we can give them that good strong voice and it's and after we've given them that voice it's up to them whether they going to take it and walk out the door with it and do something really positive or they're going to do something ordinary or they can do something nothing at all but if it just as a sounding board if you just hear it if I can help in that in any way I think it's important so mentors and pops is pops and pops and Luke Hayes man it's like it's like you know the odd couple all over again I love it you know yeah first off man this is a true passion project here like a lot of times like we don't get opportunities to really showcase the way this this design in terms of what Luke Cage is about and the story that's being told how does it feel to actually be a part of this in a creation of all of this what do you want the consumers to get out of watching this well we like to think of them as viewers <laughs> and, um, but it, it look it, it, all of the shows that we're doing for Netflix at Marvel Television came from a place that was very much grounded and real and the street level heroes. There, there's in the movie theaters, Marvel. You know, no one can really touch what they do. It's there are these awesome giant adventures, and and that's awesome. And but we're not going to be able to do that on television. We need to be able to do something that's much more intimate and much more connected and much more uh, something that an audience can sit and watch and really enjoy that can expand over 13 hours. So when you do that, you have to start with a great character. And, and for us, that's sort of the secret at Marvel, which is that we're less interested in, in the powers or the cape or the cowl. What we're more interested in is who's the man, who's the woman. And so it's Matt Murdock is much more interesting to us because we meet him before we meet the guy who's running around in a red costume. Uh, in the case of Jessica Jones, there she is with all her flaws right there, right at the very beginning. Uh, and Christian Ritter did an awesome job on it. Uh, and then, you know, once we cast Mike Coulter, you know, we knew we had our Luke Cage. Uh, Chael Coker, our showrunner, you know, was just, had a story that he wanted to tell uh, about a man who needed to move forward in his life. Um, you know, we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about it being a hip hop western in the sense that, you know, it's it's a it's a combination of the way that music can fold itself into the lives of people and how it affects people. Jo's background as a music journalist certainly helped us in that regard. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it really has to be about the man and what's happening to him. I got I got a major question for you, right? When it comes to the music. And this, like, because you already know, this this show is thrived by the music. And you had some moments that really resonated with you. Give us a little background on your music and how your how the music that you love in your background help out with your performance in the character uh, Misty Knight. You know what? I grew up in Detroit. I'm an old soul. I listen to Motown. I listen to a lot of Stevie Wonder and The Temptations and Marvin Gaye and the Isley Brothers and Otis Redding. And that to me embodies Harlem. 
And so Misty is a soulful woman. She's a Nina Simone kind of a woman. I'm named after Nina Simone. But I think that that, you know, that along with hip hop is very, very prevalent in how I helped to create that character. You know? That's amazing. Now, major question for you, Misty. Now, is there a chance that we'll see someone like a storm join Misty Knight and do something special within this series because it'll be some that's some powerful black woman kicking ass right there. You gotta give me some more of that. Y'all give me some more of that. I'm telling you, that would be crazy. I can't say whether that's true or not, but I know that there are a lot of strong, powerful black women and women on this show. We've got Alfre Wooder, we've got Karen Pittman, we've got Cassandra Freeman, we've got Deborah Ayurinde, we've got Rosario Dawson, all of these strong beautiful women who are kicking ass on this show so whether or not storm makes an appearance I don't know what have you brought within your personal life to this role to make it more believable on screen for the people that will watch you know I do not bring any of my personal self to my work I don't you know out of all the billions of people who have been born no one has the same fingerprints Everybody is absolutely unique. So as a storyteller, my job is to try to find who that person is. And most of us want, human beings want to be understood and they want to be remembered. And so it's so rare that a person's story gets to come forward. So then my job is to keep my opinions, the way I speak, the way I move around, to keep that out of the way to bring that character to life. So that's my job. It's like interpreting music. You know, if you if, if they advertise that Dudamel is gonna be playing Mozart, violin, and clarinet concerto, you can't add no notes in the middle of it. It's like you can bend those notes, but you play that score. And so that's what I try to do with character. You're amazing. So I just, I'm just, I can't wait for people to see what you do on screen. And I just want you to give them a little taste of what they'll see. Well, you know how you think you know somebody? But we don't really know ourselves. Sometimes we even surprise ourselves. There is no black or white. We live, all of us, just absolutely in the gray. And we're constantly making decisions, ethical decisions, every hour. And I think that's something that you'll see about all the characters in, in Luke Cage. And I think it's going to remind people. People want to think that they're all good. And some people think that they're all bad, unfortunately. But the truth is, we're making those decisions every hour. How does it feel to be like the, the creator of someone that now you can show off to the world through Luke Cage? I mean, it's exciting, you know, to see a, a, a character that I created just out of high school. You know, out of high school? You serious? <laughs> Out of high school. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and my I have to I have to get credit to my co-creator, uh, the writer, my writing partner, Tony Isabella, who you know who actually changed her name to Misty Knight with an N. And I said, let's put a K on that. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that, what does it mean to you in terms of? When you look at the state of the world today and, and just the problems that we have, this is a platform that talks about a lot of all the issues, unfiltered. What do you want the feedback to be or what do you hope the feedback to be once more people get a chance and the viewers get a chance to experience Luke Cage for what it is? You know, I just want Luke Cage to be real and I want everybody to, you know, to acknowledge that. Showing the facts, you know, also giving us some fantasy, giving us our own heroes. That's what we need. That's what we need. That's why I created Misty, because, uh, you know, there were no black female superheroes at the time. You know, so, you know, we just need to be represented. What really resonated with me with the character is the energy behind Bulletproof, like being Bulletproof. What have you experienced in your life that you feel that all the problems that you, all the losses that you probably have taken, now you're in a, in a situation of inspiration? What have you gone through that resonates with your personal life and being bulletproof as Luke Cage?
You know, listen, I, I, I got I gotta be honest. You know, that's a deep question. I, I gotta tell you, I, I I was lucky. I didn't grow up in the inner city. I didn't I didn't have a lot of instances grazes with death. I didn't I didn't have a lot of situations where I was I was I was you know I was lucky. I was lucky, but. That doesn't mean I can't relate to the issues that come from people who also have those close brushes with death and have family members they've lost. Mm. Right now we're in a current climate and when you turn the television on, I don't care what happens, there's no way you can't feel the pain of those people who are taken out for no reason at all. Mm. People that lose their lives because obviously people feel the color of their skin, perception or what have you. This is a time that people need to pay attention to humans and to look at us on a, on a human level. So when I look at this character and I think about him being bulletproof, it speaks to people who wish they could make a change. And so sometimes when you when you think about superheroes, what they do is they inspire us. And so we will all want to be inspired. And if we could, if we had the power this is what we would do. So Luke Cage has the power, so he are, he's going to do some things that make people cheer, st hopefully stand up and cheer. You know what I mean? Yo, I love it, dude. Yeah. Now, I got a major, another major question, right? Now, I, I spoke with Cheo, and he told me, Batman, I said, if Luke Cage went against any character in DC, who would it be? Who would you want to see him take on? He said he'll whip Batman's ass. I just want to know what you think. Who would you go against, man? Well, I mean, I, I think Batman's the easy one. That's the easy one. I go with Batman. He, he, once you get the utility belt off him, get his toys away from him, I mean, really, what else is there? I mean, Ooh, shots fired. That's great. Shaolin, Ninja, I know all that stuff, but listen, if I get my hands on his neck, it's over. Oh, this, this, this is over. You I've see this? this so I've been holding back. I mean, Luke, Luke Cage holds back. He has never really released the Kraken. You know, so so what happens if he did? It's it's, it's over. over. <laughs> yo, that's crazy. It's over. Yo, yo, look, dude, this has been amazing. Marvel's Luke Cage is the real deal. It's your boy, Hip Hop Game, a hot ninety seven. Please, September thirtieth, make sure y'all stay tuned to what this new movement of a Marvel character will be. And by the way, Luke Cage already confirmed. That once he takes away Batman's utility belt, what else is there? Once I get my hands on his neck, it's over. So you know what? DC, shots fired. It's all about Marvel right now. We out. Peace. Yeah, let's play, let's play.